Is Poland's democracy at stake? Ch chance of constitution, but also free courts and irremovable, as the chief of the Supreme Court earlier defying the order to retire. A new law gives the country's president the discretion to retire any judge over 65, which happens to be the age of Malgorzata Gerzdov. In all, 27 of the court's 73 judges affected after common courts and the Constitutional Council. It's the last piece of the judiciary to effectively fall under the direct orders of the justice minister. Is it a power grab? What options do the opposition and civil society have? And what's the grand design of Yaroslav Kaczynski, leader of the right-wing nationalist Law and Justice Party? The former prime minister, widely considered the most powerful man in Poland, believes in a Europe of nations, which makes him dismissive of the procedure launched Monday in Brussels against Warsaw's judicial reform. What happens if uh, Europe's courts rule against him? And on the day his prime minister defends the reform before the European Parliament will also be asking if the EU, EU should go so far as to suspend Poland's voting rights and whether the sovereignty of nation states trumps values in an increasingly illiberal Europe. Today in the France 24 debate, the battle over Poland and with us from Warsaw, Dominik Tarczynski, member of Parliament for the Law and Justice Party. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good evening. We also want to welcome Wanda Nowitzka, former Deputy Speaker of the Lower Chamber of the Polish Parliament, co-founder of the Polish Federation for Women and Family Planning. Thank you for being with us. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight. From Strasbourg, Dominika Czosik, uh, Europe correspondent for State Broadcaster, TVP. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for your invitation. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24 debate. The law went into force as of midnight, and it's got the pressure building. François Vibo has the story. Poland's chief justice didn't leave quietly. In fact, it's unclear if she's left at all. After being forced into retirement on Tuesday, Malgorzata Gerstorf was back at the Supreme Court Wednesday morning, clutching a white rose, the symbol of anti-fascist resistance during World War II. The position of President of the Supreme Court, regardless of who holds it, has a term limit determined by the Constitution. This term limit is not subject to discussion of statutory changes because it is enshrined in the Constitution. And by that, she means Yaroslav Kaczynski's Law and Justice Party, which passed a reform lowering the mandatory retirement age for Supreme Court justices from 70 to 65, effectively pushing out over a third of the court's 72 members. Ousted judges have the possibility to remain by asking special permission from the president, a way of swearing loyalty to the ruling party. Critics say the new law amounts to a purge of dissenting voices, while Polish leaders claim that older judges are relics of the communist era. Our partners in the West sometimes have difficulty understanding Central European realities. Because you were lucky enough not to suffer 50 years of communism, you were on the right side of the Iron Curtain. Life on our side was completely different, and the transformation since 1989 saw communists surviving unchanged in the new system. The EU had warned there would be consequences for Poland. On Monday, Brussels launched legal action against Warsaw, accusing them of undermining an independent judicial system. The infringement proceedings could threaten Poland's voting rights and funding from the EU. And by the way, joining our discussion now, Paris traffic couldn't keep him away. Jacques Rupnik, a, a director of research at the uh, French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po. Welcome to the discussion. Pleasure to be here. Uh, let me begin uh, with uh, Dominika Tar Tarkinski uh, in, in Warsaw. Uh, were, we saw in that report, uh, it, it was a bit of confusing scenes because the man who's been appointed to replace 
uh, the chief justice appearing with her later at a press conference saying, no, 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 I'm not her replacement. Uh, I only fill in when she's not around. Is she still the chief uh, justice of the Supreme Court? First of all, I'd like to underline that we are not a nationalist government. We are proud Polish and proud Europeans. We are conservative. So I do not understand why we recalled just a minute ago a national uh, uh, government, which, it, which is not true. First of all, I'd like to say that I do not see the reason why judges are better than the rest of the society. Our, our retirement law in Poland is 65 years for um, men and 60 for women. So I can't see the reason why the judges should be better. That's number one. Number two, balance of power. Three powers in democracy. In major democracy, we have a balance of power. For now, and since 1989, we never had a balance within judiciary. They couldn't be put on trial. We as a parliamentarians, we can lose our immunity. We can go to jail. Judges, no. And very important, only 30% are under the new law, 30% of the judges of the um, uh, Supreme Court, which is 27 people, and 16 of them, which is majority, already applied to the president by new law uh, to continue their work. So they says, yes, the new law is constitutional, and we're going to ask president for the permission to work on to continue. So that's very clear to me. All right, before I turn to the other panelists, just let me ask you, because the, the man who's replacing her, Josef Iwulski, he's a year older. He's 66 years old. What, is it really about age? Well, the new law gives every single person possibility to apply to the president after 65. Even, our, even though that our law is 60 and 65 for whole society, we agreed to leave 65 for the judges. And after 65, everyone can apply, so they are not sucked. Uh, and as I said, most of them already applied for it. So they agreed that this law is constitutional. Wanda Nowitzka, you agree? And not, not at all. Uh, I think this is a key question um, uh, which you've asked. Uh, why this uh, move has been done? Why uh, uh, the law has been changed so that the judges cannot work uh, according to this law, which we all find uh, unconstitutional? Why they cannot work anymore? Because these, these judges have to be removed because they don't want to listen uh, to the law and justice authorities. So uh, the only way how to get rid of those uh, um, naughty judges is to get rid of them by this uh, rule of, uh, of uh, uh, diminishing the age um, of uh, work. But imagine, for example, uh, what would happen if, for example, in hospitals, all of a sudden, the law and justice decided that doctors, uh, professors, cannot work more than uh, over 65. Do you think that people would be happy that they are going to, it's coming uh, from to the be Constitution. Uh, cured by... Uh, uh, the, the people could be cured by the doctor, by doctors who are not as experienced and knowledgeable as doctors, as professors of medicine. The same applies to members of parliament. Why not to implement the law? And I would encourage now the law and justice to introduce the law according to which members of parliament cannot be older than 65. Why judges are to be discriminated against other, um, other uh, uh, professionals? Uh, um, because if, uh, if law and justice uh, will introduce the law according to which members of parliament cannot be l older mm. than 65, I then I understand there is a certain logic, but I don't see. Um, and uh, uh, and so that's so the, the so I'm coming to the, the main um, argument. It's not about age. 
it's about the changing of Polish, uh, uh, Polish uh, state system. We are moving very quickly uh, in the direction of authoritarian regime. Public media have been taken over already by the law and justice. Uh, 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 courts, we are not talking about Supreme Court uh, only, but other courts like Constitutional Court has been taken over and completely uh, marginalized and disempowered. Then you have uh, the Council of Judges that has been completely taken over and uh, filled by the judges uh, from law and justice uh, um, uh, 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 agreement. Uh, uh, finally, uh, the, no, the judges, uh, I mean, in, norm, in ordinary courts, in case they, uh, they give sentences which are um, not supported by law and justice, uh, immediately they are being harassed, uh, dismissed, uh, criticized, uh, and reply, attacked, like, uh, uh, mem like Mr. Tarczynski uh, has just said. Um, he said, why judges are to be, um, I don't know, uh, especially, uh, especially uh, All right, let, let me bring no, in, let me bring in Dominika, let me bring like in Dominika. Dominika Chosik on this. Judges of the, legal, uh, of the legal system. Let me bring in Dominika Chosik on this. Is there, under so, this reform, Dominika Chosik, is there just, too much... I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I just found out that I would have to go to the parliament in a minute, so I would like to reply. It's very important that this reform, it's coming from the expectations, from the people. We, when we showed our program during the campaign, we promised this, uh, this reform, and that's why our government was elected. But does that's it concentrate you, uh, too Madame much, Levitska, Dominic Tarkinski, anymore. does it concentrate too much power in the hands of the Justice Minister? It is a question to me. It's First a... of all, <laughs> it is not true. We changed, our, we, we, changed, we changed our act after the consultation with the com uh, European Commission. He's not the one who's appointing the judges, as it is in Germany, for example. Today's appearance uh, of Prime Minister in the European Parliament was very symbolic because he was trying to discuss it and uh, explain that our law is completely the same as it is in other member states, but nobody wants to really listen. They uh, attacked us, leftists, uh, like Madame Nowitzka, thank God you are not in the Polish Parliament and you will never be anymore. And this is again what Polish people expecting. This is what they ask for. This is why they elected law and justice. And um, again, I, I have to say sorry in a minute. I just get a message that I will have to go to the parliament. All right, Dominique Tarkinski, thank you for joining us in the France 24 debate. Let me turn to Dominika Chosik. Thank now. you very much. Uh, let me turn to Dominika Chosik now and, 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 and your thoughts uh, on, uh, uh, well, the charge that's been coming both domestically and abroad, that it's a slide towards uh, too much power in the hands of the executive. I, I heard this uh, opinion, but that is, I don't agree that it is true because uh, just compare situation in the previous during the previous government, Platform Civic, uh, which was uh, eight years in the power, they had all, they had media, they had uh, also Supreme Court, they had the uh, Constitutional Court, and they have a majority in parliament and also president elected who has been member of this party. So it is not new situation in Poland. It is quite normal. And it is uh, thanks of the democratic election, people just uh, gave a chance now to law and justice to rule. And it is first question. And second question, if I can add, according to the judges, uh, Unfortunately, in Poland, there are still judges who have been active during the martial law and who has How been many? How many? How many? Because that was, what, more than 35 years ago? Yes, but there are still some people acting. Uh, How I many? Can't, I can't give you numbers, but at least, uh, at least I think, uh, to 10 or 15 percent, but uh, I can't give you exact numbers. And it is a problem not only in Poland. It is the problem in all former socialist countries. And I will give you another example of, of another country. It is Slovenia. I've just talked with Slovenian MEPs from EPP party, and they tell me, told me a story about Janusz Janša. It is former prime minister of Slovenia. He's been sent, uh, sent to the prison. He spent six months in the prison because of the false accusation and the judges who has been active also during the socialist time in former Yugoslavian when Tito was still ruling. They sent, they put him to the prison. 
because of the false accusation. Let me turn. Let me turn to. Let me turn to. I will just finish. And it was just three months before the election in Slovenia, so it was right. kind of political game, and he was not able to take part in this election. He, of course, his party has lost this election, and now it was a few months ago decision of uh, Supreme Court in uh, Slovenia, and they told that this accusation has been false, and they have to apologize. It sounds a bit like anecdotal evidence there, but let me turn to, to Jacques Rupnik. Uh, uh, the, we, we saw in that report at the outset uh, the Polish prime minister today before the European Parliament telling lawmakers here in the West that we don't understand the central European realities. Your thoughts on that? Well, the central European realities, what is it? It's a drift away from what Central European transition to democracy was only a few years ago. These countries have embarked on a formidable transition, built democratic institutions, the rule of law. This was a condition to join the European Union. Now that they are in the European Union, some of them are drifting away from that. But and you heard Dominika Chosik's argument. She's saying, wait, there's a few judges who are leftovers from yeah. the time when there was well, martial law in let, Poland. Let me put it this way. You, uh, uh, that's a way of fighting the previous war. You know, uh, something wrong in the country? Oh, it's because uh, legacy of communism or communists. Uh, you know, this was a hell of a long time ago. Martial law in Poland, for those who don't know, you know, martial law was established in 1981. Uh, uh, and uh, the assumption that Poland is run by judges who are doing the martial law under communism is, is simply uh, 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 nonsensical. What I take on board is that all the main legal institutions in Poland, the Association of Lawyers, the Association of uh, 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 Constitutional Lawyers, etc., they all criticize this law. There is a, a, a former president of the country, including Lech Walesa, have launched a petition, 160 NGOs. Concern. So this, there is a very strong concern in the country that this kind of argument about, oh, we're fighting the legacies of communism. You're fighting the legacies of communism, which, has, which is, has been dead for 30 years. Listen, we have a new agenda in Europe, if, in case you haven't noticed. And it's, on our, it's, it's our agenda today, and that agenda has to do with the regression of democracy in some countries. Poland is only one, Hungary is another. And you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about the issue of, of, of what's going on, uh, how it could be a trend or, or a bellwether for what's going on throughout Central Europe. But uh, you mentioned uh, Lech Wałęsa uh, in Gdansk, the cradle of the anti-communist solidarity movement, uh, the legendary uh, democracy a leader uh, declaring that the current government's even, quote, more perfidious than the communists that he helped to topple on Facebook earlier. He announced he was going to be driving to Warsaw to help We've peacefully gone, and bring it all to, a, to, a, to a head. Um, he, he's saying, he said, quote, um, I am ready for the physical removal of the man perpetrator of all this misfortune. That man that he's referring to, of course, is uh, the head of the ruling uh, law and uh, justice partner party, uh, Yaroslav uh, Kaczynski. Uh, th let me ask, Vanda Novitska, does d Lech Wałęsa, is he, a, is, is he somebody who still has influence or is he just a relic from the past? Uh, I, th I would say uh, now, uh, due to the uh, po politics of the uh, law and justice, uh, uh, Lech Wałęsa has become again uh, quite important uh, public uh, figure uh, who speaks about the issues uh, uh, which are of great concern uh, for many of us. Uh, um, before, uh, he was not active anymore and not uh, necessarily uh, uh, accepted by all, but now his uh, revival, his comeback, um, is uh, um, caused by what's happening in the country, because the situation in the country is extremely dangerous. Uh, uh, we, uh, although we still have uh, uh, remnants of uh, democratic system, but what's happening in the Polish uh, parliament is really scary. Uh, the fact that the law and justice uh, has a uh, um, majority uh, is not uh, is sufficient argument 
government to make irresponsible decisions about uh, the country. Moreover, and now I'm speaking as a former Speaker of Parliament, uh, I can say that uh, now uh, no democratic procedures are, uh, are kept uh, um, in Parliament. Uh, you can pass the law in one day. Uh, before uh, it was um, impossible to do it in, in such a um, in such a form unless it was uh, extremely different difficult situation so now one day the, the, um, the MPs cannot discuss if they speak publicly they are uh, they uh, are punished uh, uh, by taking uh, his uh, uh, per diems away so this kind of uh, ways uh, the methods are meant to uh, uh, to calm them down uh, unsuccessfully. And what's what civil society? But, uh, what are, what, what's we, the opposition? What are the opposition? Uh, what are the opposition's options? What are they going to do? I, I mean, the main opposition option is democracy in the streets. Uh, we don't have democracy in Parliament anymore, but we have democracy in the streets. Uh, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are going out to the streets uh, uh, for the last uh, almost three years on the occasion of destruction of constitutional tribunal and many institutions, and now they are in the streets, and even now, in this moment, there is again demonstration uh, uh, near the uh, Supreme uh, Court. People are scared and they uh, disagree with those, uh, uh, with, with, change, with taking our, um, our freedom for, for us. One of the slogans is there is no freedom without uh, uh, free uh, courts. So uh, um, the situation is very scary, very dangerous, uh, because uh, um, the, um, uh, if a judiciary is completely disempowered, Let's hope that the uh, Supreme Court will be able somehow to, uh, to defend uh, uh, um, uh, itself, uh, but the rest of the legal institutions are completely uh, destroyed. So without legal system, uh, system we don't have any checks and balance, separations of power um, anymore. All right, let me, uh, let me bring, so, in, let me bring, in, let me bring in on this, Dominika. Not, uh, Dominika. the end of the story. Dominika Czosik, uh, will you agree that uh, Poland, which is uh, a country which does very well on indicators such as uh, rule of law up to now, is becoming a winner-takes-all democracy? I don't agree. I think that, of course, maybe not all things in Poland are going in good direction. And, of course, there is, uh, it should, there is necessary of uh, debate, public debate in Poland on different uh, issues. But I don't agree that uh, Polish democracy is uh, in the threat. And let me just go back to Lech Wałęsa. For me, as a younger generation, a little bit younger than President Wałęsa, it's very sad to observe how, how this person who was symbol of freedom, he was symbol of Solidarność movement, and for many people, he was very important person, even hero. Now, it's uh, it is the grace of uh, his uh, popularity because uh, many of his comments are just ridiculous. What does it mean that he will come to Warsaw and he will try to eliminate uh, the reason of all those problems? That, uh, does it mean that he would like to kill Mr. Kaczynski? It is uh, very sad and I think that we shouldn't agree with this kind of uh, opinions in public life because then everyone can say that, of course, I don't like Tusk, I don't like Kaczynski, I don't like Morawiecki, so I will come and I will try to eliminate this, this person. And what we will have? We will have internal physical war in Poland. We shouldn't uh, agree with this kind of comments, and I think that it is not a question or only for, uh, it is not a problem also only for the people who are supporting of government, but it is also common question in Poland also for opposition, for the so, uh, social media. We should be against this kind of comments because it is just hate speech. Jacques Rupnik, your, your thoughts on this, Pete? Well, I think that Lech Valenza, if this is uh, your question, of course he's a symbolic figure and uh, he's a symbol of the fight against communism. So if you're telling us we're doing this reform because there are too many communists in the judiciary and Lech Valenza is coming to their rescue, that doesn't sound terribly, uh, 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 terribly serious. No, I'm there sorry, are many problems. There are many problems. Politician. I let you finish. Uh, uh, there are many problems with Polish judiciary. It's slow, inefficient, 
sometimes corrupt. Then it needs reforms. But reforms doesn't mean that you give judiciary in the control of uh, uh, the political power, the powers that be. Uh, the separation of powers, this is a key thing. It's key thing for dem Polish democracy. It's key for the European Union. The European Union is based on the observance of the rule of law. This is what unites us. We have a common market and we have common legal norms. We, it all relies on the idea that we have trust, that I trust that your, in your country, the judiciary will be independent. And if we have a different, uh, 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 if we have a difference on, on some issue, it will be arbitrated by independent courts. If you tell us that there is no independent court, you have undermined the very basis of, uh, 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 of the rule of law uh, on which the EU. Which brings rests. us to the question of what the European Union is going to do about it, because we're not talking about no disrespect to our Hungarian viewers, we're not talking about Hungary here, or, or, or Austria even, which are small nations uh, in size. Poland is the sixth biggest uh, member of the European Union. Absolutely. Well, size matters, but, you know, uh, the principles matter as well. So uh, uh, I don't think the European Union engaged with sort of lightheartedly in this idea. Remember, when the government... But how far are they going to take it? Because they well, launched this legal proceeding on Monday... But where is it really going to go? They well, they took it to the uh, 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 European Court of Justice. And, of course, that in itself is a signal. I think the, the main thing, of course, you will have to wait for the decision of that court. And I don't know what that decision will be. But it is the signal, the process that counts. It's not the only one. Listen, this is the third procedure. There is a first a procedure that the European Union has started uh, over... Uh, the independence of ordinary tribunals. There is now the procedure concerning the uh, uh, Supreme Court. And there is the European Union procedure under Article 7 concerning uh, the rule of law in Poland. So this is already three. You, you don't seriously think that the European Union, the European Commission or the European Council, has engaged lightheartedly uh, uh, in such a challenge. Uh, they're doing it because they think this is serious. Mr. Timmermans, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, deputy uh, uh, president of the European Commission uh, uh, from Holland, I think somebody who has been very much engaged with this issue since the very beginning. Our viewers perhaps don't know that since the government took over at the end of 2015, they started with a number of laws. Some of them concerned the independence of the media, basically government control of the public broadcasting. And the second was about the constitutional court. Immediately after, at the beginning of 2015, the European Commission asked for explanation, clarification. The second phase was evaluation of the situation. Is it moving? Is it not moving? Is it moving in the right direction? Then the third phase was what kind of measures can the European Union take? And this is the three uh, 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 that I have just and mentioned. And they go all the way to, ex ex to suspending it, Poland's it will, voting rights. It will not. It will not. Let's be frank about that. Yeah. You need unanimity for that. And that will not happen because Viktor Orban has already said over his dead body. And basically, I think the procedure, the process is more important than the actual final measure uh, uh, that will be taken. The idea that the Polish uh, political system takes on board that it is under dual pressure, one from the society. You have just mentioned the demonstrators and mobilization. You know, it's not just judges that are mobilized or lawyers. It's, 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 it's the public. And the second pressure comes from the European level. And I think this should provide constraints on how far the government is prepared to go in taking over uh, con political control of the judiciary. D Dominika Czosik, as uh, the Europe correspondent for uh, Polish State Television, do, do, you, uh, do you feel that pressure? Hmm. I feel other pressure and I feel uh, other very unpleasant for me situation. Uh, let me be frankly. A few days ago, I wanted to have interview with some politician from uh, EPP party in European Parliament, and he told me the right. of the of the camera that I'm sorry, I I will not talk to you because uh, my colleagues from Platform Civic told me that I shouldn't talk to you because you work in public television. I thought, okay, it is. Uh, I will not force you. I will not force one, force anyone to do anything. But it was uh, for me ridiculous that. Uh, 
people don't try to talk. Hopefully I found other politician from the same fraction, political fraction from EPP who told, okay, maybe I don't agree with your television, with your government, but I will talk to you but also broadly, to, show, to, show my, to show my own ex uh, point, point of view. And I made this interview, but... But more Just, broadly, Dominica, make... how much pressure will the what, what will the pressure from Europe work in terms from of European changing Commission, minds? From European Commission, you mean European Parliament? Yes, European yes, Commission. Of course, will of course, it work in changing minds in Warsaw? I think that yes, of course, they don't ignore this because it is important. And as uh, uh, Mr. Rupnik told, it is already a question, uh, question of three uh, different cases against Poland. It is. Uh, uh, Article 7, but it is also now this uh, intentional red letter sent by European Commission to Polish government. And uh, it is, of course, important because it is quite a uh, kind of political pressure made uh, by an uh, international institution, European institution, of course. I don't uh, say that it is not true, but we'll see what will happen, of course. And, uh, and it is also a question of double standards, because you have now judicial system reform in Romania, which is uh, also very, uh, commenting on very critical way in the European Union, especially in the European Parliament. But the European Commission is very slowly in, in, with acting, and the European Commission didn't do nothing. And uh, regardless of the fact that uh, right, I think that it was Mr. Timmermans who told that it is also he doesn't like this reform, and uh, they will watch this carefully, but they don't act. All right, let me put this to Wanda Nowitzka, because uh, uh, the, uh, those in Warsaw who are critical of the EU point to the fact that, well, the current president of the European Council is Poland's uh, former prime minister, Donald Tusk, who is uh, from the opposition. Having Tusk as president of the European Council, does that help or hurt your cause? Um, I don't think it has a very big impact on the situation in Poland. Uh, and actually, uh, um, uh, what is important about this topic is the fact that the civil society is uh, now sh demonstrating that uh, the, we are the European Union. Uh, the law and justice is trying to convince everybody that here is Poland, independent from the, the rest of the world, and uh, the EU, uh, EU institutions are far away from here and uh, al almost irrelevant. But Polish citizens uh, believe that we are the citizens of the European Union and the European institutions are our institutions and we want these institutions to represent civil society and to support the civil society in bringing back uh, uh, real democracy uh, to Poland. Uh, so it is not about one person here and there. We know the law and justice is using as a strategy strategy of uh, a struggle strategy to uh, denigrate uh, Donald Tusk, Wałęsa and other people. But the problem is, uh, but the, the point is about the institutions. A Polish, a, a Polish about, citizens about Poland institutions. want to be members of the European Union. They are afraid uh, uh, about uh, uh, European institutions and they are afraid that the policy of the law and justice is leading us uh, towards uh, uh, excluding Poland from the European Union, and, is, um, and we disagree with that. There is a right, great let me, let me support in, of we're Polish running, citizenry we're running, we're running a little bit short our on membership. We're running a little bit short on time. i just point out, Austria's got currently uh, a coalition with the far right. They've taken over the rotating presidency of the EU since the weekend. Uh, last week, the president of the European Council we were just talking about, Donald Tusk, the former Polish prime minister, paid a visit to Austria. Let's listen. As a faithful reader of the works of your great compatriots, such as Karl Popper and British August von Hayek, I would like to warn all those who look for order and security in the public life not to do it at the cost of freedom. In the history of Europe and Austria, of Poland and Bulgaria, the road to security has all too often become the road to serfdom. Is this an even bigger problem, Jacques Rupnik, than we've been talking about the migration crisis on the show almost nonstop the last couple of weeks? Is this what Donald Tusk is talking about, an even bigger problem, a more uh, existential problem for Europe? 
Yes, uh, the two things are connected because, you know, on one hand, you have the question of the institutions, the, the framework for democracy, the rule of law, the kind of institution that we share. And the second question is more uh, about what kind of values, what kind of society are we going to uh, be? And of course, the migration crisis revealed very sharp differences about that. But the two things are connected. And the way Donald Tusk put it, it's interesting in Austria, which is a kind of bridge between East Central Europe and West Central Europe. In fact, this is the way the Austrian pr prime minister defines himself. He says, I want to be the, uh, the, the bridge builder. And this is not just because he's taking over the European presidency. I think in some way he is in this dual situation. But what Donald Tusk just said is very interesting. He reminds the Austrians about Karl Popper and Hayek, the, roads, the author of the Roads to Serfdom. You know, people who lived under communism had a long time <laughs> to think and read <laughs> these authors and meditate about how you drift into an authoritarian or totalitarian system. And so he is telling the Austrians, but I think he mentioned uh, uh, other countries as well, and he's telling us, you know, we, t we shouldn't take democracy for granted. The slide towards authoritarianism or sometimes something even more nasty can happen progressively. And uh, this is a kind of warning. And I think that this is, uh, uh, this is exactly the tone that with which we should approach what is happening in Poland. You know, it's no use screaming, you know, there's a dictatorship. No, uh, this is not Putin. This is not Erdogan. This is not something. Like no, it's a drift away from liberal democracy towards something hybrid, semi-authoritarian temptation, let's put it that way. And to have this warning coming from a Polish, former Polish prime minister who happens to be chair of the European Council, is, I think, very timely and very useful for his country, but for everybody else. The fact that he says that in Vienna means this is something that all Europeans should take on board. We should not be complacent. Mm -hmm. We should look around in all countries, including this one. All of us have to share this concern about the fragility of democracy. When we a conversation, we will continue. Jacques Rutnik, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank as well Wanda Nowitzka for being with us uh, from Warsaw, Dominika Czosik from Strasbourg, Thank you for Thank joining you. us here in the France 24 debate. Our World Cup Daily is next with Simon Harding.